What is a direct servo subwoofer? This question comes to us from Mike in Austin, Texas, a place I definitely want to visit. As I've been to Houston, I've been to Dallas, I'm not a big fan, but Austin is a place I think I'd like to go. <laughs> um, hello, Paul. I've been interested in rhythmics subwoofers for some time and have heard you mention the benefits of servo woofers. But what about a direct servo woofer? Is this term a marketing gimmick? gimmick? Uh, what is the difference and are there any benefits to one over the other? Thanks. Well, let's explain what's going on here. So, um, Rhythmic and what's the other? There's another, is it JL? I don't remember, but uh, there, there's a couple of uh, companies that use this different kind of servo than what I would propose, which is using an accelerometer. Rhythmic, uh, I think they trademark their thing, the direct servo sub. And it, it's definitely valid. It's, it's certainly, it's a motional detector. It's the same sort of idea that Infinity did years and years ago on their RS1 system. So let's talk for a moment about servos and, and I'll, I'll try and explain what they are, why they're important, and what the difference between a direct servo and a accelerometer-based servo are. So the problem we face with woofers is one of mass. Woofers weigh a lot relative to, say, a tweeter. Okay, so a tweeter, you've got a very thin membrane, you're trying to move very high frequencies uh, without uh, much distortion, and to do that, you need a very, very thin membrane. A woofer is very different. You've got, you know, a 12 inch, 10 inch cone that is metal or uh, carbon fiber, as any, any number of, of materials. But in general, they're big. I mean, compare, you know, a tweeter to a woofer. And a woofer is, is moving a lot of air pressure back and forth. And it's usually in a sealed box. And when that woofer moves in, it compresses the air inside of the box differently than when it moves out because out here in space, there's a lot less air pressure than inside of a tiny little box. And, and I'm not going to get into open baffle speakers right now, which don't have that problem, but they have cancellation problems. They've got all kinds of other stuff going. So the problems of woofers are exaggerated relative to mid-ranges and tweeters, okay? And Mass and those differences manifest themselves in terms of overhang, of distortion, and doing something the woofer was not told to do. So imagine you're a power amplifier. I'm a power amplifier. <laughs> and I got, I got, ah, big, you know, here we go. So you're a power amplifier, and your job is to send out a signal that's going to put an electrical energy into this, this coil, and this coil is going to make a magnetic field, and it's going to oppose or attract from this big permanent magnet, and it's going to push this mass, this heavy mass cone away or towards the, the magnet. And that's what we're doing, right? And so uh, you're, you're a power amplifier, and you're told to take, take it up to here and then bring it on back. Well, when you do that, because of its mass, there's inertia. And inertia says, eh, I know I'm supposed to go back, but I'm going to keep going, just like somebody slamming on the brakes, right? You, you, you keep going through the windshield if you don't have a seat belt on. So there's that problem. There's the problem of uneven pressure so that as I move back, the same amount of energy to move it this way is going to cause a different result because of the increased pressure of the box to uh, this, that an identical amount of energy moving it back this way where there's less pressure. So one of the things we can do is we can measure the movement of that woofer cone in an, on an instantaneous basis and compare it to the input signal, what it's being told to do. And the difference between those two can be made up for by the amplifier. That's a servo system, okay? 
just, just like a cruise control is a servo system. You set it at 70 miles an hour, you start going down a hill, the system says, woo, and it pulls off on the gas. And you start going up a hill, it steps on the gas. Same, same basic principle. The difference in servo systems is how do we sense the motion of the cone, right? And there's a whole, oh man, I mean, there's been, there's guys who have had lasers pointed at it and mirrors and, you know, it's just, you can start dreaming all day long of how you would like to measure the movement of that cone in real time. The way it's traditionally been done by the, the woofers that I've been associated with, with Infinity and Genesis and soon PS Audio, is with a device called an accelerometer. An accelerometer is something you have in your phone. Every airplane in the world has them. Um, every phone in the world has it. And it, it tells you, you know, what, how you're moving the phone around. And it's basically a, uh, a device that is, that as you move it, 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 it gets deformed. It's like a little disc. Well, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of ways to do accelerometers. But it's a physical device that at, at, that at rest, it, it's not doing anything. As you move it, it slightly deforms and responds to that movement, converting that to an electrical signal and then we do f fancy things to it to uh, get act what we actually want out of it, which is velocity and acceleration, et cetera. The other way to do it, and that, that's traditional, that's how we'll do it with an actual accelerometer element to measure that motion. And it's very accurate, and we can do lots of good stuff. Is it perfect? No, of course not. Nothing is. The rhythmic idea is, is, is a much simpler system and it uses another coil of around the voice coil, right? So, as I said, if you apply energy to a coil, you'll make a magnetic field. That's the voice coil, right? We put energy from the power amp into a voice coil, it creates a magnetic field, and it pushes it away from a permanent magnet, or it pulls it towards it. Well, the opposite is also true. If you take a coil of wire and you move it away from and towards a permanent magnet, the opposite happens. An electrical voltage in direct proportion to how you're moving it is generated. And that's how a generator works, right? And we covered this in my video, Coal to Coal Train. It's still on YouTube, by the way, if you want to watch it. And so they just simply take another coil of wire and they measure the motion of the woofer using that. Is it perfect? No. Certainly not. It has its problems as well. And, and their claim is it's the best way to do it. Our claim is that's the best way to do it. Doesn't really matter. If you get the results that you want, which in our case, using an accelerometer, we can get about 10 to 20 times lower distortion. We can eliminate the overhang and we can give an absolutely flat frequency response down to the point where we, we don't want it to go any further and then roll it off. How well they do on that account? I imagine it's uh, probably pretty well. So I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference, but that's what it is. And I'm sure it's a great product. Okay, thanks. I uh, hope that didn't get overly complicated. I didn't mean for it to, to do that, but I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, bye.